I've been using this phrase for a long, long time, feel the discomfort, do it anyway. Initially, the students don't like it because it means that they know there's discomfort ahead. But I really focus on the fact that it's in the discomfort that change happens and that learning occurs. I think it's important for them to recognize like they're not the only ones feeling the discomfort. It's not easy to take this approach in a classroom where I'm very lucky, I have very supportive colleagues, but in a lot of other educational spheres, people, they don't understand what I do or how to do it. 90% of our land is protected by the Oak Green Belt or the Oak Ridge Moraine. What we have to do is make best use of the lands that we do have. In order to still have a livable, healthy community, we have to plan well ahead. And that's where planning comes in, to, to have the foresight to make sure that as we do grow, that it's still a community where people can enjoy their lives. And because of our limited area to actually grow, we're having to rethink how we actually plan growth in the future. And we've doubled twice in size already since 2006, and we're gonna double again. We don't often ask enough our youth how they feel about things that happen around them and what needs to happen for it to be enjoyable for them and for future generations. So the opportunity to reach out to them, that's not just for the professionals, that's everybody in the community can have a say. I think that if we want kids to care about the subjects that they're learning, we have to be able to show them where they connect to them. So they have to see their community and what they're learning. I want you to consider what makes the design ideal for its location. Think about the geographic inquiry question. What is where, why there, and why care? And so the town really proved to be an incredible partner in developing this project. One of the things that really came out loud and clear was that Stouffville was sort of at a crux in its, um, in its growth as a town. We looked at the area surrounding St. Catherine Drexel and this was an area where the town really want, wanted to focus their efforts because there's really not much around the school right now. So these are the kinds of things that when you're trying to sell your idea tomorrow, this is what we have to highlight. So we really wanted them to have the experience of you know, what would it be like if you were a planner to design an area and then pitch that idea to elected officials. Food trucks are a really effective way of providing public service without having to put a whole lot of effort into the infrastructure, right? The kitchen comes to the location. Anything else that you can think of? So there are three geography classes. Each class is working on one specific area. So uh, the grade nine French immersion geography class is working on Timber Creek directly south of the school on 9th line. Mr. German's geography class is working on uh, turning those into retail areas. And then my class is working on what's referred to as the wind garden lot, which is a remaining piece of land from a farm owned by the wind garden family. Okay, people, we have just under an hour. So, get to it. For this project, I, I knew we wanted to get them to do some mapping work. But one of the challenges with ArcGIS mapping is that it is an industry platform, so it's quite complex. But then I remembered something that Angela Alexander said, you're not teaching ArcGIS, you're teaching with ArcGIS. That catchphrase for me was really, really powerful because when you look at industry, you know, the way that professional like urban planners and cartographers and surveyors are using ArcGIS is completely different from how we would use it in a classroom. But that doesn't mean that the kids can't use it. So the mapping in ArcGIS was effective as getting them to start planning their process for what they would design. Okay, so these are some key elements. I want you to think about what sets this design apart and what makes it a really attractive option for the town to invest in. We're selling our ideas to work. They've been using story mapping since the beginning of the semester. But the story map is key for demonstrating uh, how essential that process was and what the creative process looked like. So the story map allows us to really capture that and weave the story through the maps, through the screenshots, through their budget documents to say this is how we got to the final product. And I think, in my opinion, the how is often more important than the what. As a French immersion teacher, I'm extremely grateful to have these ESRI tools available to us because the entire interface can be changed into the French language. My students have created their project in a bilingual aspect, so on their ArcGIS maps as well as in their slide decks, they've created it both in English and in French. So our students, they were the help desk in math and science. So the geography students would actually come to the help desk for research on whatever their math and science needs were. What I want is true collaboration, so everything that they generate gets assessed independently. But 
the collaboration is a learning skill. And so I watch and I see how well they collaborate. And I've seen students work together on this project that would have never spoken to each other before something like this, or would have assumed that they would never be friends. But that's all the learning that's happening all in real time in front of their eyes and they don't even realize it because it just feels natural. It's not contrived. It's a very organic experience for them. So tomorrow's the day. By the time we're back together tomorrow as a class, we will have already pitched it to the town and we will be able to bring back all of the excitement that happened there to the rest of the class. It's just such a proud moment because I know how hard they've worked. That for me is, is really why I love doing what I'm doing, just watching them grow into better students but better people along the way. My idea for a project is to build a community garden. By growing food locally, we reduce the need to transport food from different places, saving energy and reducing pollution. I think the community garden in the center of the community is a brilliant idea. We're looking at a lot of new development and community gardens is one of the things that we are being asked to consider because people are wanting to grow their own food. And it was great to see it's not just uh, a project on paper, but it's something that will hopefully motivate them to stay involved in community development and, and the future of, of, of developing great places to live and work in the future. I can tell you right now, those students going into this process didn't know what GIS stood for. <laughs> and now they do. They actually can go onto the town's website and they can log into our GIS and they can see things that they didn't know existed before and hopefully they're telling other people. So this partnership has been a huge benefit, not only for the students, but also for our staff who can speak to them in a language that they commonly share now. You are our young leaders in our town. You're not our future leaders, you are leaders and you're thinking about things that need to influence us. I'm really proud of the work that you guys have done. Like, very, very proud. When I was watching the presentation today, I was thinking, you cannot appreciate the amount of work that went into the story map without having done the process with all of you. You know, it's funny that we're talking about mapping, right? ArcGIS Maps works in layers. There are so many layers to the work that you did. We had the foundation, and we just kept layering on the different tasks that you had to do until you came up with a really incredible project. I know it wasn't easy, but I'll tell you something. Anything in life that's worthwhile is never easy, but they're always the most rewarding. That for me is the part of teaching that I love the most um, because you get this group of students at the beginning and you don't really know them. And then you see their growth, you see how they've started to develop confidence in their own skills. So I think ultimately what I would love is for people to recognize that we are in a safe place where we can take risks um, and we can encourage growth and challenge our students to become what they're able to become. But we can't do that if we just keep doing things the way we always have. And so my hope is that somebody watching this might think, you know, I've been wanting to try something different. I've been really wanting to take risks in the classroom, um, but now I'm actually going to do it, knowing that even if it doesn't turn out exactly as they had hoped, that there will be a really rewarding experience at the end of it, not only for them, but more importantly for their students.